Hello everyone, welcome to the 14th episode of the It's My Job podcast. This is Jose. I am a transition student from Colorado. And my teacher, Miss Christine Dully, is the podcast facilitator. The It's My Job podcast features students interviewing adults who are blind or visually impaired, investigating important questions like how they use technology and how they connect with other people. Each of our interviews were designed by students for students. Stay tuned after the podcast to learn how to get involved. And please share with your friends and teachers so they can listen too. Now for the interview. Jack is interviewing Eliana from Team USA. She is a goalball athlete and she is studying to become a counselor. What got you interested in the sport of goalball? Hi, thank you. That's a great question. Um, So I grew up loving sports. I'm in the middle of two brothers and was always very competitive. I tried to play other sports like soccer, but my vision was so poor that by the time I could try to track the ball, it was kicked away. Um, I tried individual sports like cheerleading or gymnastics or track, but it just wasn't fitting what I was looking for. I really wanted to be a part of a team and play a high intensity contact sport. So when I discovered goalball at 14, I fell in love with it because vision was completely eliminated. Everybody was wearing blacked out eye shades. So no matter what your level of vision was, it was equal. And so it was the first time in my life, sports or outside of sports, where vision was completely eliminated and I could be an athlete first and just excel to be the best in my abilities without having to compensate for my vision loss and trying to cut through all the barriers or challenges or obstacles just to be on the same playing field. So I fell in love with it because I could be an athlete first and it was very empowering to to get that opportunity and experience to, to play and compete in a sport without having vision be a limitation. Okay. How many hours a day do you spend training? That's a great question. So we have a lot of training. We have on the court training where we're doing drills and skills and practice. And then we do a lot of strength and conditioning. Um, We'll do cardio training, um, circuit training. We'll do stretching and yoga and recovery. So on average, I would say we spend about four hours a day either doing on the court training or off the court workout. Okay. What does a typical day look like when you are training? Yeah. So a typical day and with our training and our workouts, we also have a team nutritionist. So we work really hard to eat like healthy and to prepare ourselves to compete or train. And we have a trainer that helps us with aches and pains. So a typical day, I'll like wake up and try to have a nutritious breakfast. And then I will have a two hour practice. And then we will have break to have lunch and have some recovery. Um, And then we'll have a two hour strength and conditioning session. And then we'll break after that and have some more recovery time. And then I'm also in graduate school. So I'll get some schoolwork done, have dinner, do some more schoolwork, and then go to bed. So my days are pretty full between training and schooling. What skills um, or experiences do you need to compete in the Paralympics? That's a very broad question. I would say overall to compete as an athlete at an elite level in the Par- Paralympics, you need to have a lot of determination, a lot of drive. Um, you need to be able to work through challenging and difficult experiences. Um, you need to be able to to learn from failures and to you know have those successes it's not easy it's day in and day out a lot of training you might have difficult days and you need to be able to come back the next day with a be motivated and positive attitude so overall i think you need to have a lot of determination and drive and be like resilient and you, you can't give up when you have a bad day you need it you need to keep pushing for goalball specifically it's a very high contact cardio based sport so we do a lot of like i was saying circuit training or interval training to work on improving our cardio. You need to have a lot of power in your movements. You need to be quick and you need communication on the court and off the court. Goalball is a team sport. And so you need to be able to learn to work with your teammates collaboratively. So as a whole, you guys can be the strongest and most powerful team possible. Okay. Why is goalball a sport specifically designed for individuals who are blind or visually impaired? 
That's another very interesting question. So I always tell people the history of goalball. It was created after World War II as a rehabilitation sport for blinded veterans. And it was inducted into the Paralympic Games a few, like 20 years later in, in the 1970s. So the thing is in the Paralympics, there are 22 sports and every other Paralympic sport has an able-bodied Olympic partner sport. So you have track and then you have para track and you have swimming and para swimming or basketball and wheelchair basketball. However, gold ball does not have an able-bodied partner sport. It is the only sport that in its essence was created as an adaptive sport. And so there's no other sport like it where there's a non-adaptive version of it. Gold ball itself is adaptive, which makes it really unique and really cool and interesting to play. Okay. What previous accomplishments led you to be a Paralympian? I discovered the sport when I was 14 and I started playing on the youth level and started going to youth tournament. And from that experience, I got to meet some of the U.S. national team players and get involved on the adult level. And from there, I got invited to a USA team training camp. So that's your first step is you want to your first step is to get involved and to go to tournaments into practice. And from there, you'll get invited to a training camp if the coaches decide that you have what they're looking for. And then at a training camp, you'll be evaluated for subjective and objective criteria that the coaches have both on and off the court. Objective would be specifically, are you hitting the shots you're supposed to hit? Are you making the blocks you're supposed to make? Are you able to execute the drills? Are you able to follow instructions? So it's very black and white. It's, it's did you do this or did you not? Subjective criteria is more based off interpretation. I think it goes back more to the, the coach's perceptions or interpretations. Things like being a good teammate. Are you, you know, doing the things you need to to make the what's best for the team? We have, like I said, a nutritionist and a trainer. Are you communicating with them off the court? Are you following through on things you're asked for? Are you filing your paperwork? So there's on the court things and then there's off the court things that all go into consideration to if you're eligible for a team. And there are six individuals who make up a team. So you have the USA men's team and the USA women's team. So in this summer for the Tokyo 2020 games, there will be 12 individuals, athletes who represent the USA, six men and six women. And leading up to the Paralympic games, we have a ton of competitions domestically where we compete against other US players and internationally where we will compete against other international teams like Brazil, Japan, Russia, Turkey, China, and Canada, just to name a few. And so we have smaller level international competitions such as the Sweden Malmo Intercup or the Pajolati Games and then we have bigger tournaments such as World Championships or the Para Pan American Games and so each quad we have sets of international tournaments that we'll attend to prepare for the Paralympic Games and so your goal is to try to make those those teams where you travel internationally and you get exposure to other countries and you get to play these other teams and continue to build up your skills and your abilities and your experience and so those are all things that will go into consideration for you to make a Paralympic team. Okay. What place did you win or earn while um, practicing in the Paralympics? So I have been to one Paralympics and that was in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro. And in that competition, the USA women's team won a bronze medal, which was incredible experience. We, we beat Brazil three to two in our bronze medal game. So it was really fun to play the host country and we had lost to them our first game of the tournament. And so we came back for our medal game and we were able to play. And it was a really hard fought, great game on both sides. And to win that bronze medal at the Paralympics was one of the most amazing and incredible experiences I've ever had. But now we are training for the next quad for Tokyo 2020, which got pushed out a year because of COVID 2019. So the games will be held this summer and we are working to do everything in our power to be as prepared and ready as possible to aim for that gold medal. Eliana, this is Jose. Can you describe to us the team's reaction when they knew that the Olympic Games got pushed back a year? We have been training. The, the dates are predetermined years in advance. And so the minute the Rio Paralympics ended, you know, took a couple months to recover. And then we were like back at it again. You know, we had this date in mind. And for four years, we were training to be at our best peak position for this time. And we had our countdown. We had a 
one year out, or 300 days out, or 200 days, we were at 200 days out when the games got pushed an extra year and it went from less than 200 days, 512 days. I still remember <laughs> those numbers because it felt so disheartening and overwhelming. And on the one hand, we recognized that everybody was being impacted by this. Everything was getting pushed and we understood why it had to happen for safety. And I truly believe it was the correct call to make, but that doesn't take away from that initial moment of just frustration and disheartenment and sadness. And so we, in our own way, each individual had to do what they needed to do to get that fire and that motivation and that passion back. And so we, you know, we all kind of took the summer to, to do what we needed to do to rejuvenate and be refreshed. And we, you know, hit the ground pretty hard in the fall. And now since the new year has hit, we are, we're back at it training full capacity. It's almost like the last year just kind of happened and now we're back as if it was last year this time so our training schedule is to peak for august um we have things set up in place to help us prepare and so you know we are ready we're back to that less than a year out and we're doing everything possible to to be ready so to answer your question and it was definitely you know a shock we were not expecting it you know this year last year this time but it's happened and we just use this time to become a stronger better more prepared team. How many years have you competed in the Paralympics? So Paralympics are every four years. And then, as I mentioned, you have world championships also every four years. So that would be in 2014, 2018, 2022. And then we have the Parapan American Games. So to answer your question, I've only been to one Paralympics, but I have been traveling with Team USA internationally since 2013. So from that point on, I have been attending international trips with the team. What are your future careers? plans? Great question. So as I mentioned, I am right now a graduate student working towards my master's in clinical mental health counseling. I'm very passionate about counseling, especially working specifically with individuals who experience disability or an impairment. It is a passion of mine to do counseling and it's a passion of mine to do disability advocacy. So if I can put those together and serve an underserved population that needs more awareness, that is my overall goal. So I have one more year left. I'm currently doing my internship portions of the program right now. And next fall, I will graduate with my master's and I hope to get a position working to do mental health counseling. I want to be a counselor who specializes in disability counseling to work with clients who can come to me and they don't have to explain their frustrations with their disability or any microaggressions they experience or discrimination. I want them to come to me where we can work on the issues at hand with that shared knowledge and understanding of what it's like to live life with a disability. I don't think there's enough counselors out there who have the lived experience of a disability, and I believe it's an underserved population. How do you earn a living while competing in the Paralympics? So that is a tough one. We um, don't get paid a ton of money to train and compete. We get some stipend to help offset certain costs, but it's definitely not enough to live. So as an athlete, when you're training for Paralympics, you need to have employment or in my case, I'm in school. So I'm working to uh, have future employment, but most athletes in our program are either in school or have jobs to uh, make a living while training as a full-time athlete. Okay. Well, that was all my questions I had for you. Well, thank you. Those were all very great and informative questions. Now, Eliana, do you have any questions for Jack? Yeah. So Jack, you mentioned you are in a program right now for individuals who are blind. Can you explain yeah. what that program is? Yeah, that's um, a program for, we go for three years. Um, it's basically a program where people like me have vision problems and we go, we come here, learn like cooking and volunteering jobs. Oh, wonderful. That sounds like a lot of great opportunities. Have you ever heard of Bowl Ball before? No, but we talked about it before in class, but until then, I've never heard about it. Okay, see, that is why I'm trying to do more awareness and education on adaptive sports and specifically goalball because I didn't learn about it till I was 15, 14 or 15, and I was born with my eye condition. And so I didn't learn about it for 14 years of my life, and I want to make sure other individuals experiencing vision loss have awareness and knowledge about sports that are okay. out there so that you can still compete um, if that's something you're interested in. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. And I was born with 
my I I can listen to well. So well, if you are interested in getting involved in goalball or more specifically adaptive sports, um, wherever you're at, there should be a local line uh, organization. So if you if you know about it or if you Google it or ask someone for help, you should be able to find an organization near you that um, provides adaptive sport opportunities for athletes who are visually impaired. That sounds cool. Go Team USA! Yes, go team, go USA! <laughs> Hi, it's Jose again. Thanks for listening to the last episode of the It's My Job podcast. What did you think? Do you like sports? Have you ever tried goalball? Let us know by posting down your videos on our Facebook page showing us your skills. Or you can share your thoughts by phone or email. And if you have any questions for Eliana and Jack, we would be happy to pass them along. And we might even share your questions and answers in a future episode of the It's My Job podcast. The phone number is 202 Eight five zero four four. That's two zero two six eight eight five zero four four. Outside of the United States, you may need to dial plus one or one and your international access code. Be sure to check with your parents first. You can call us and leave us a voicemail, or you can send a text message. The email is ask it is my job at gmail.com. Again, that is A S K I T S M Y J O B at Gmail dot com no spaces and no apostrophe we want you to know that you can find us on facebook just search for ask it is my job each of our episodes is also on the perkins path for technology blog check us out and leave us a comment at perkinslearning.org slash technology and finally we have a youtube channel called it is my job if you missed episode number 13 head over to facebook or youtube to listen to my interview with Lori. You will learn a lot about her experience as an incentive practitioner, past president of the American Council of the Blind in New York. This was our 14th episode, and we want to make many more, but we need your help. If you are a student who is blind or visually impaired and would like to be an interviewer on a future episode, please have your parent or teacher contact us via phone, email, or our Facebook page. And we will get you matched up with an interviewee. If you are an adult who is blind or visually impaired and would like to be interviewed, please send us a message via phone, email, or Facebook, and we will get back to you. Once again, our phone number for text messages and voicemails is 202 688 Five zero four four. Our email address is ask it is my job at gmail dot com. That's A S K I T S M Y J O B at Gmail dot com. We have a lot to be thankful for in this episode. Thank you so much to Eliana and Jack for taking their time as our interviewer, and interviewee. This interview was facilitated by my teacher, Miss Christine Dully. Thank you, Miss Dully, for providing us students with meaningful opportunities for our future careers. Thanks to Perkins Path to Technology for the blog post. Our music is from purpleplanet.com. With so many of us working and studying from home, we hope This podcast is becoming a great opportunity to learn from each other and increase awareness about all the amazing jobs that are been done by people who are blind or visually impaired.